going on everyone? Sneaky Mofo here. Today we're going to be talking about hacking Game Maker games. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you know Cheat Engine and you can at least make your way through the Cheat Engine tutorial uh, hacking your way completely through that with no problems whatsoever. So if you're not there, go check out my older videos because a lot of this stuff may go over your head, but I encourage you to still watch it and pick up what you can. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it here. Now I made this little quote unquote game in Game Maker that has health, gold, and a timer. You know, three basic things that you would see in games. Um, and that way I could just quickly influence, like give myself health, take away health, give myself gold, take away gold, whatever. And then search for those changes and work from there really quickly. So um, if you want to try to hack this yourself before diving into this video, you know, I encourage you to go ahead and do all that. Do me a big favor and don't like leave in the comments your solutions and stuff because I want people to be able to see, you know, or try it themselves or, you know, whatever. If you do, then you do. <laughs> uh, but just beware that someone might give you some spoilers in the comments. Anyway. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and attach. Um, so the first thing I've noticed that Game Maker sometimes can have two processes. So if you click Window List here, that will give you the definite one that you need to attach to, at least what I've found so far. Okay, next thing. I've noticed that the values that I can influence in the game, that is, you find them, you can change them, and then, you know, the behavior that you expect happens. Uh, the value types are double and eight bytes. I've seen both of those. I have found four byte values, but they were just related to values you see on the screen. Those can still be useful in scenarios of break and trace, but right now, not going to worry about those. Um, so what you can do with that in mind is go to your scan settings and edit and settings, and then you can set the all type to be just eight bytes and double. So you can uncheck whatever else you have there. And um, I'll say okay. So what that does is now if you click all from here, this will search just double and eight byte. So the first thing I'm gonna do is search for 3200 because that's how much gold I have here. All right, uh, don't know what that is, but that's not what we're interested in because we see it changing. So this looks to be our one. Uh, let's try changing it to 5,000. And there we see this updated instantly to 5,000. That tells us one thing right off the bat, that there is an instruction that is accessing this address. It's accessing it so that it can find the value and then write it to the screen here. So if we say find out what accesses this address, we'll see that the game crashes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Cheat engine not responding. Love it. Okay, so let's just try this again. Let's go cheat engine and open up my application. This brings up a good point, actually. I haven't had it happen with my game here before, um, but with Hotline Miami, I think, if, uh, if you want to hack that game, uh, settings, debugger options. I never, ever, ever have to use anything other than VEH debugger. Rarely. Um, but I have to use Windows Debugger in Hotline Miami because if you go to see which addresses an instruction writes to, whenever you click stop after doing that, it makes the game crash with VEH Debugger every time. So using Windows Debugger alleviates that. Um, anyway, all right, so just going to jump right back into it here. Window list, click the game. Uh, let's say all, and then let's start with a search for a thousand. Whoops, uh, not a hundred. Thousand. There we go. So let's go to 800. This changed. Yep, that's our one. All right, so find what accesses this address. Boom. All right, so there's one instruction that's continuously accessing the address. Okay, so what we're going to do first is stop that, and we're going to take the traditional sort of route where you could either do this manual searching for these other values, or we can try to say, okay, um, maybe this address is also accessing other values. 
So with that in mind, we could say show disassembler and right click here and say find out what addresses this instruction accesses. Now if you're playing like a legitimate game maker game, uh, there will be a ton of addresses popping up here likely. So this may or may not be an optimal solution for you. Uh, you see zeros here and that's because this defaults to four bytes. We can change that to double, which we know that's what our value type is. We see 800, we see five, okay. Uh, presumably our timer is also being read here, so what we can do is start the timer here. And there we go. We can see that one value changing with our timer. I'm going to pause the timer. Oh, and look at that. The top number there changed to one. So that, this is actually when we want to enable the timer. Let's just change this to one. And there our timer goes. So there's another value of interest, perhaps, depending on you know what you're doing so basically this one instruction you know depending on the type of game you're hacking you could instantly find your way to some really cool mechanics or values just by doing this all right all right so now what i'm going to do is uh, we have gold there i'm going to double click to add our health here and uh oops not gold delete that the timer so we're going to say gold health and then timer. I'm going to stop this. I'm going to move health above gold because I want these three to kind of be reflective of how we have it here stacked. And that will matter in a second. I'll show you. All right. So first thing that we're going to do is uh, now that we have these three, you know, let's say we want to write a cheat. So we hop into the data structure dissect tool and we try to find some differences from some offsets. So here we can select these three that we're interested in, open and data dissect. Just say okay through all this. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so sometimes you'll have this. You know, it, this is showing a string. We know it's not a string. We know it's a double. So we can just double click here and change it to double. You know, Cheat Engine guesses to the best of its ability, but it doesn't always get it right. So. If there's an offset that's a certain value type, you know it should be, but it's not, you can just change it. And there we see our values properly showing. Um, so I can tell you right now that most likely you're not going to really find anything through this comparison like this in the structures. Um, you're not gonna find anything reliable to use to compare in a script. Um, and I've looked way all over the place before in this. And Game Hacker, or Game Hacker, Game Maker games posed such a problem for me for a long time. Um, but so something else you could do is if you can't find any differences going this way, you know, you could just manually say, like, minus F8. And we'll copy that, paste it, paste it. So now, instead of our values being here, they're going to be F8 down. So here, once again, it thinks it's a string. Let's change that back to double. All right. So now what we did is instead of having our values sitting right here at the top and we can't see what's in the offsets uh, above this or lower than, by subtracting that, now we can look around up here and see if we see any differences. So anyway you're not going to find what you want through here. So if you can't find that, well then what do you do? How do you write a script? Well, I'm going to close this, close that. I don't remember which one this is at the moment, so I'm going to close that. The first thing that we can do, all right, if, if there's nothing in the memory addresses, um, in the structure that we can find, you know, there has to be something somewhere where the game differentiates where it needs to write these values to. So you have your registers to look in. So what we'll do is we'll say find what accesses this address. All right. I'm going to stop it, click on the instructions so we see all the data here. And then I'm going to do it with these other two as well. Find what accesses. Stop. Whoops. I didn't mean to double click that. Stop. Click on that. Move this up. And we're basically just going to compare, we're going to look at these three, look at the 
registers of each of these. And now within our registers here, we want to try to find patterns, like what can we find to differentiate each of these three and make some correlations. So the first thing we can do is look at what our addresses are, right? So this is 2DEB4C0, and that was this one. So if we look through here, we see that EDI contains our memory address, right? So this one, does EDI contain the memory address? It does. This one, same way. So what that means is we see that that's the address. But if this instruction is accessing a ton of different addresses and we say, okay, tell us what EDI is, that's not necessarily going to give us the addresses that we're interested in. So what's something else that we can notice in here? Um, EDX looks really interesting because here we have 186A0. This one is A1. This one is A2. So could it be that if EDX is this, then we know that this is our health. If EDX is that, then it's our gold. So then what you could do is write a script that you inject on this instruction, and you say basically if EDX is this value, then you could write this address to an address that we allocate, like that we globally allocate in memory, and then we could reference that address, and then when someone enables the script, the three addresses that you want will populate with the values that are in them. So that would be one way that you could, you know, get your way to the addresses when you restart the game. Um, in the event that you can't do that, because Game Maker is different. It doesn't always have this one instruction that gives you what you want uh, insofar as this one that accesses. So what we're going to do is close these and instead of accessing, let's see what writes to the addresses. Just writes. So I'm going to do that one and that one. We'll do those two first. So health. All right, I added health there. I subtracted health there. So we have these two instructions that pop up. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Um, and now we'll do it for this one. Oops, there we go. Adding gold, taking away gold, same two instructions. Okay, I'm going to stop that. And then we're going to do it on this last one here. Find what writes to this address. Click here. Let's start the timer. Let's stop the timer. All right, so we have these two instructions. There we go. The first one, I don't know what it does. I didn't spend too much time with it. Um, but I'm sitting here looking at it now. I see our addresses, but that's it. This is the instruction I decided to focus on. Okay, so... One thing that you notice is that ESI contains the memory address for the values that we're interested in, which obviously it's going to because here this is referencing ESI. Um, F, store, and pop, keyword, PTR. So this is taking a value from, the, from ST0 in the FPU and it's storing it to the address that ESI is pointing to. So... This is expected. We fully expect to see ESI contain our memory addresses. However, everything else between these three is exactly the same. So since memory addresses change, you know, they're dynamic. Whenever you load the game, these are going to change. Um, now what do we do? Let's say we compared these three. We can't find anything different in there. Uh, these registers have just the memory address as being different. That doesn't help us at all. Well, now what we want to do is look at the stack. So we can say more information with each of these. That popped up on my other monitor here. 
more information. Okay. So once again, we are working on the idea that there is something somewhere that the game is differentiating so that it knows which address is the appropriate one to write to. Right? So whenever you click the more information, you get this. And then you have these two little buttons that are sort of tucked away over here. All right. F is the floating point registers, so you can look at your XMM registers and floating point registers to see what resides in those. But then we have this S, which is stack. So you can look at the stack. And this is, this is where our gold lies, basically. All right, so I'm going to bring up the stack for each of these. Stack, that popped up on my other monitor here and then stack. All right. So now that we have that for each of these, what you can do is look around on the stack and see if there's something that looks similar, like what we were looking for before, a, a pattern, something that differentiates each of these, right? So these are our memory addresses. We can't do anything with those. These are the same between all of those. Same with these two and here. And then with this, who knows, memory address. Here we have this 420, right? Going, all this stuff is the same. All right, then we get here to this offset, EBP minus 54 has what looks like, remember seeing this value before in the uh, what accesses the address? So this appears to be a, a place on the stack where we have that value that we can differentiate, right? So uh, if you notice, for these first two here, this one's health, this one's gold, because I'm keeping them in order from left to right, top to bottom, right? Health, gold, timer. All right, this one, this value is uh, at EBP minus 54. All right, same for this. However, that value, that patterned value, if you want to call it that, is sitting at EBP minus 50 here. So... We basically have what we need now to write a script. So I'm going to go ahead and say show disassembler. Click this again. Click these three. Do this. Okay. And then at this instruction here, we're going to go tools, auto assemble, template, AOB injection. Okay. Uh, player stuffs. Okay, so we have our bytes that we're going to scan. All right, so what kind of cheat do we want to try to make? Let's make it to where the timer is rendered inoperable. So instead of writing what's in the FPU to that address, don't write anything there. Let's try that, and then let's try, um, just to like save on time here, let's uh, write 9999 to health and gold. So the first thing that we'll want to do is um, allocate, let's say, golds 4, and then just above here we'll say golds and DQ double. Nine, nine, nine. Okay, so this is going to set us up for being able to write a double to those addresses that we're interested in. All right, so we'll have label code, we'll do label original code, and then let's say we want, uh, we need a label for our gold health and timer. So let's do label player gold. Label player. Well, let's do this. Gold label player timer health. 
All right, so now we should be able to reference all the things that we want to do with the type of script that we want to write. So now what we want to do is whenever we hit new mem, uh, well, first of all, this is original code. We'll change that to that. All right, the first thing we'll do is jump to, or we'll run code. Once we jump to new mem, then we'll hit code here. Um, so what I want to do first is, since EBP minus four is a memory address, <coughs> excuse me, we can't do a compare like that. We need to have that in a register. So this here. All right, so let's go, um, I'm going to use EDX for this. So I'm just going to push EDX to preserve it. And then what I'm going to do is move into EDX EBP minus 54. All right, so that's this here, EBP minus 54. So this value will move into EDX. And now we're going to do a compare. So before we do that, I'm going to push F to preserve the flags register. And then we'll compare EDX, what is that, 1, 8, 6, A, 0, right? We'll compare that, all right? And if it's equal, then we will go to player gold, all right? Player gold. And we'll come back and do something with that. All right, so then what we can do is, because the, uh, the value in this offset is the same between these two, between health and gold, now we can say compare EDX to 186A1, because here it's that, and jump if equal to player, uh, oh wait, I'm sorry, that'll be gold this will be health, right? Yeah, player health. Uh, so player health, and then player gold. All right, so then finally, what we can do is we can just reuse EDX. So because the last one here, we wanna check for timer, this one is at EBP minus 50, okay? We'll say move to EDX. EBP minus 50. And then we'll compare EDX with 186A2. Jump if equal to player timer. Um, and then player timer. Um, otherwise, jump to original code. All right, so that's our logic for this. We're checking to make sure if we're any of those three, right? And then once we get to that, then what do we want to do? All right, so let's say it is player health, okay? Well, what does the original instruction do? The original instruction um, stores whatever this val whatever value is in st0 so in your fpu um, you have eight fpu registers st0 through st7 all right so what this does is it stores the value from st0 into wherever you're referencing here so this is storing whatever is on top of the fpu stack into the memory address that is well, in this case, um, our player. So what we want to do is instead of running that original instruction, we want to have it write this value, all right? And we'll just use the FPU register to do that. Well, whenever you pop, FSTP means store and then pop, which means get rid of that value off of the FPU stack. Um, if you just go like FLD, uh, keyword PTR and then what do we do golds well this is going to be health but we'll say golds because we want to write the same value um, what this is going to do is load that value onto the FPU stack okay so let's say you have 
ST0 through ST7. Let's say each of those has a value in them, okay? If you just do FLD keyword like this, whatever, it's going to load the value from here onto ST0. And whatever is in ST0 is going to get pushed down to ST1, and so on and so forth. What this means is that whatever is in ST7 gets nixed. It's out of here. So if you just load a new value onto the FPU, then you are going to potentially get rid of a value that's residing in ST7. So you want to preserve that. You want to try to preserve the FPU stack, just like we preserve flags and we preserve registers and all that stuff, right? So what we can do is do FSTP ST0. All right, so what does that do? It runs, it basically pops a value off of ST0 without storing it anywhere. You know, so we don't want that value to go anywhere. And we know because of the original instruction that whatever is sitting on top of the FPU is the value that it would write to our memory address. So we can pop that value off because we don't want that value. So we pop that value off and then we load the value we do want into the FPU, which will uh, basically convert this to what we want, convert our double here, and then we could just jump to original code. Because now, after we do this, the value sitting on top of the FPU is our 9999, or it should be. So once we jump back to original code, it's going to store our value that we just loaded onto the FPU into our memory address, right? So we kept the FPU stack balanced. And that might not be necessary, you know, but it's something I like to do. Try to keep everything balanced at all times, right? So because I'm going to jump back to original code, um, what I want to do is pop uh, pop F and then pop EDX because we pushed EDX originally to preserve it and then at some point we pushed our flags so we're gonna pop that so now what we can do is um, for our gold we can just copy and paste that because we're gonna have it do the exact same thing Right now, typically, you know, we would do perhaps a different value here, which means we would allocate another four bytes and then DQ another double value. But, you know, we're just doing what we're doing here. Um, and then finally, what we want to do is if it's the player timer, OK, don't we don't want it to do anything. Just don't put a value into the timer. So what we could do here is. Uh, we could pop F and then uh, pop EDX just like we would. And then instead of running this instruction or jumping back to original code or whatever, we can just have these things run like it normally would have just without that instruction. So we can pop all those registers like it would have, right? Um, and yeah. There we go. So I guess one thing we could do with player timer if we wanted to, since this is an FSTP, we could technically do this here. All right. So in the spirit of making sure that we have the state of our FPU be what it would have originally been, we're just going to pop that value that's on ST0 to go nowhere basically right so the final thing that we're going to need to do is dialloc golds and i think that's the only thing that i have because only player stuffs is registered as a symbol all right so hopefully this isn't going to crash on us hopefully this is going to be the deal so we're going to go file assigned current cheat table all right i'm going to click the game here click this well, just go ahead and close all this stuff out. Close it. Close, close. 
And you see what I mean by how like extensive this gets? It takes time. It's really fun. Like once you figure out pretty much how to do all this stuff, right? All right, so we're going to enable the script and hope we don't crash. So far, so good. All right. Now let's change our health and see what happens. Look at that. We have 9999 health. Let's try our gold. Same thing. Now for our timer, let's try to enable it. Nothing. It's not doing anything because we told it don't put the value from the FPU into this memory address. Don't do that, right? So, so that's it. <laughs> so now you could save this table. Um, well, let's just do it. Let's disable this. I'm going to get rid of all these. Uh, file, save as, let's go to, uh, yeah, we'll just save it there, whatever. I already did a table for this earlier, so let's do two, save it. Well, I guess I really didn't have to save it. I'm just going to close the game here. All right, let's reopen it, and then reattach cheat engine. Window list, this keep it click that all right health subtract whatever same same with gold start the timer nothing happens so our cheat works and now i could take this cheat table give it to you with this and see since i okay now that's another thing see how the timer just kind of like started I disabled the script. Remember earlier when we were seeing like what that in, what addresses that instruction accesses, and we found the uh, true or false, the zero one toggle of the timer. So when I have the script enabled, that timer toggle can still be set to true, but because we have it not writing whatever values in the FPU to here, when we disable the script, the timer will still technically be on, right? So now we can disable it. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Go check out. There's a bunch of Game Maker games. If you go to Game Maker's website, you can search for games that are made with Game Maker. Uh, it, it'll really test your metal <laughs> with, uh, you know, assembly and your understanding of digging around the stack and registers and memory addresses. So that's kind of like the trifecta now of game hacking, you know. You're looking around in the structure, looking through memory addresses. If there's nothing there, dig around the registers. If there's nothing there, try to check the stack, you know. Um, and then where applicable, try a break and trace to trace your way back up to see what you can find. So, all right. I hope that you found this video useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Check out my other Cheat Engine videos. I have a whole bunch of them. Also, um, check out Chris Fate from Cheat the Game. He's got a lot of good supplementary sort of um, material as well as covering additional things like uh, game protection schemes and stuff like that, how you can hack those anti-hacks, basically. So uh, go check that out and, yeah, just have a good old time hacking video games. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, and I will be back soon with another video. Take care.